I'm going to introduce the concepts of consumer surplus and producer surplus in a market for a particular good. In previous lessons we introduced the concept of equilibrium price and quantity and explained why equilibrium price and quantity are considered the most efficient in a market due to the fact that at the equilibrium price and quantity the marginal benefit to consumers equals the marginal cost faced by producers of a good. In this video, we're going to expand on this concept a little bit and distinguish between the consumer surplus and the producer surplus that might be experienced in the market for a particular good. First, we need to define consumer and producer surplus. While these concepts may sound complicated, they are really quite simple. Consumer surplus is something everybody experiences whenever they feel like they got a good deal. In other words, if I paid a price lower than the price that I was willing to pay, I experience consumer surplus. The technical definition of consumer surplus is the additional benefit enjoyed by consumers who pay less than they are willing and able to pay for a good. Let's look over at our market for beef and we'll explain how consumer surplus can be illustrated and understood looking at the market diagram. The demand for beef represents the marginal benefits of all the consumers who might wish to buy beef at different prices in a particular period of time. Some consumers have much higher willingnesses and ability to buy beef than others. If you think of the market for beef as being made up of thousands or millions of consumers, then those who are willing and able to pay the most for beef are represented by points up here on the demand curve. Since their willingness to pay, their marginal benefit is greater than others along the demand curve. So there might be a few hundred people willing to pay a very high price for beef. There may be several hundred more willing to pay a slightly lower price for beef because their marginal benefits are a little bit lower, and so on. The demand curve represents the willingnesses of all the consumers in the market to buy beef at a range of prices. When the price of beef is actually P.E., then everybody who is willing to pay more than P.E., in other words, anybody whose demand falls along the range of the demand curve above equilibrium price and to the left of equilibrium quantity, experiences some degree of consumer surplus. Assuming the demand curve represents thousands or even millions of consumers, there are points all along this demand curve representing individual consumers who are willing to pay more than the actual price of P.E. The area, therefore, below the demand curve and above P.E. represents, graphically, the additional benefit or happiness of all the consumers who bought beef at a price lower than they were willing and able to pay. I'm going to shade the total area of consumer surplus on this graph in yellow. Consumer surplus is something that is desirable. It means that people are feeling like they got a good deal. Anybody who is willing to pay more than PE, in other words, all those represented by the upper left-hand side of the demand curve, are going to experience consumer surplus when they buy beef for a lower price than they're willing to pay. So graphically, consumer surplus is represented by the area below the demand curve and above equilibrium price. The yellow triangle on this graph represents the extra happiness or well-being, the extra benefit enjoyed by everybody who felt like they got a good deal when they bought beef at a price of P.E. Let's go on and talk about producer surplus. Producer surplus is a similar concept as consumer surplus. In other words, it's the additional benefit enjoyed by individuals who, in this case, were able to sell the product at a price higher than that which they were willing and able to sell it for. So producer surplus can be defined as the additional benefit enjoyed by producers who were able to sell for a price higher than they would have been willing to sell for. Later on in the course we'll clarify that in fact producer surplus is basically another word for profit in a market. However in the case of this simple supply and demand diagram we're not going to be talking about profit since we don't have cost and revenue curves which we can refer to and calculate profit. However, I will do a similar explanation as I did for consumer surplus. Assume that the market for beef is made up of hundreds, maybe even thousands of cattle farmers, all with varying degrees of costs. Some cattle farmers are more productive and efficient than others. Therefore, they can raise cows and produce beef at a much lower marginal cost than others. The, the most efficient and productive and low-cost cattle farmers are represented by the lower left-hand corner of the supply curve here. These are farmers who would have been willing and able to supply beef at a much lower price than they were actually able to sell it for. 
the most productive and low-cost cattle farmers are earning lots of producer surplus when they sell beef at a price of PE. However, less efficient cattle farmers, those with only a few cows who have higher costs or face higher rents, maybe pay higher wages for the workers, are experiencing less and less producer surplus since the price of PE is closer to what they were actually willing and able to sell beef for. Knowing that the supply curve represents not an individual cattle farmer, rather thousands of cattle farmers, all competing in the market for beef, the total producer surplus experienced by cattle farmers is illustrated by the area of the triangle below the equilibrium price and above the supply curve. I'll shade that area in purple here. The purple shaded area represents the additional benefit enjoyed by farmers and beef producers who were willing and able to sell their beef at a price lower than the equilibrium price. Graphically, producer surplus is represented by the area above the supply curve and below the equilibrium price. Now in our previous video we actually used the word surplus in a very different way. In economics a surplus refers to the amount by which the quantity supplied of a particular good exceeds the quantity demanded. In our equilibrium video we explained that surpluses are things to be avoided. We do not want excess supply of goods because excess supply is considered an inefficient allocation of resources. Let's not get confused here though. Producer surplus and consumer surplus are not things to be avoided because in this case the surplus refers to extra happiness, extra benefits enjoyed by producers and consumers. At the equilibrium price and quantity, consumer surplus and producer surplus are actually maximized. We'll show in another video how at any price or quantity combination other than PE and QE, there will be a decrease in the total amount of producer and pr consumer surplus. Sometimes we refer to the sum of producer and consumer surplus as community surplus or the term I prefer to use is total welfare. Welfare is something that should be maximized. We want to make consumers and producers better off. There is no way to make producers and consumers better off in a market than when the price and quantity are at equilibrium.